So, what are we going to do? If we put a planet near Vega, it will indeed radiate the infrared, but the surface area we need to get enough infrared out is staggeringly big. Uh, we need millions of Jupiter-sized planets to make it work, which seems a bit ridiculous. So how can we get enough surface area without having to require a ridiculous amount of mass? Well, there is a possibility, which is to use the square cube law. The basic idea is this. You take a sphere like this one. As it gets bigger, its surface area is proportional to r squared, whereas its volume and its mass is proportional to r cubed. What that means is, for a given mass, small things have more surface area. This is used in the natural world. For example, mice can drop from great heights because they're very small, therefore they have a lot of surface area for their mass, which means wind resistance allows them to drop safely from great distances. If you're a massive thing like an elephant, uh, you won't fall very well from a 10-storey building, whereas a mouse can survive quite fine. Likewise, elephants have a very small surface area per unit mass, so they need their big ears to keep themselves cool, which mice don't need to worry about. So can it work for expanding infrared excesses in space as well? Well, let's have a look. Here we've got one mass, and you can see its surface area is quite small. It's only a tiny fraction of your screen. But now let's go to uh, break it up into ten pieces, each with one-tenth the volume. And you can see it's covering rather more of the screen. Now let's break it up into a hundred pieces, so we're getting smaller pieces but more of them. And it's covering even more of the screen. And if you go to a thousand lumps, ten thousand lumps, a hundred thousand lumps, now you're seeing that the same mass spread in these small bits is covering most lines of sight through the screen. Let's look at the maths of this. So let's say we have a certain amount of matter, say a mass m, and you want to break it up into spherical lumps, each of radius r. And there'll be n of these lumps. Now, of course, if r is bigger, that means each of these lumps weighs more, so you get fewer of them, so n will be smaller. And we'll assume there's some density here, rho, as well as this matter. And let's imagine that this whole cloud of lumps is exposed to some radiation, and the amount of radiation absorbed will be proportional to the surface area of these things. And what you want to do, and that will also be the amount that's emitted, because of ng in equals ng out. So what we want to know is, how does the surface area go as a function of r? OK, so how do we go about solving that? Well, we can start off by saying what the mass of an individual, so let's, so let's call this a big M here. Um, the mass of an individual lump is going to be its volume times the density. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density rho. So that's the mass. How many of these things do you get? Well, n is going to be, the number is simply going to be the total mass you have to distribute divided by the mass of the individual objects. So that's going to be 3 big M over 4 pi r cubed rho. Now that's told us how many of these things we're going to get. Now we want to work out the surface area of each. Now, if the radiation is going from one direction, the surface area is actually the cross-sectional area. So you replace that with a disk facing towards the incoming radiation of the same radius. So it's pi r squared. If the radiation was coming from all directions equally, then the light might fall on this bit or that bit, in which case you might have to use a surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. So, but let's use pi r squared for the moment. Um, or really after is the constant of proportionality. So in that case, the surface area of all the lumps is going to be the number of the lumps times pi r squared. Now this is assuming that these lumps are sufficiently few and far between that they're not shadowing each other. When the number becomes very large, you might get you know, one lump here shadowing one lump there, and so the area won't be quite as big. But this is what's called the optically thin case. So the surface area equals n pi r squared. Let's substitute this value of n into that. So that's 3 big M over 4 pi r cubed rho times pi r squared. 
So we can cancel the pi's. We can cancel the r squared with slipping down to r. And so what we find is that a is proportional to 1 over r. So take Jupiter and break it up into pieces a million times smaller. R is down by a factor of a million, so your surface area is up by a factor of a million. Break it into bits that are a billion times smaller, and your surface area is up by a billion. So that suggests a way to get the incredibly large infrared excess that we're getting from Vega. What you need to do is have some stuff out there, but have that stuff broken up into small lumps. Small values of R will give you a big value of the surface area. If it's in the form of big lumps like Jupiter, you're in much more trouble.